How can you not be a little bit excited about a flower as big and glamorous as the begonia? Well, I'm not a little bit excited. I am super pumped to be able to celebrate the Ballarat Begonia Festival. And of course, all around me, begonias, as far as the eye can see. The curator of the Ballarat Botanical Gardens and one of the people making what has to be one of the most colourful festivals in Australia happen is Peter Marquand. This is such a spectacular glasshouse to be in. What's sharing the space with us? How many plants? We have around 700 of these. We probably have one of the biggest collections of begonias probably in the world uh, because we grow 2,500 of them. So it's a staggering number of plants and our nursery, one of our glass houses, is actually full at the moment of tuberous begonias. What do the colours do for you? I mean, standing it's, here, uh, it's, it's beyond the best television screen, ultra high definition. Your eyes start to buzz when you look at the intensity of colour. It's quite amazing to take in, isn't it? And we find when people are coming into the conservatory, the first response is for people actually stop um, and try and take it in because we have such a brightness and variation in, in the different colours here. We have two different types of begonias in our collection here at Bella. The tuberous begonia. The tuberous begonia has a tuber. Now, the other type that we have here at Ballarat are the, the non-tuberous begonia. So these guys have pretty insignificant little flowers, but still pretty stunning. Yeah. But I love the, the different leaves. Incredible. How do the flowers become so big? Well, What's behind that? We take all the female buds off because we don't want the plants to produce seed. Then the plant puts all the energy into the flowers that are left, so which are the male flowers. And so the male flowers are naturally bigger anyway, and when their purpose is really to be showy. Ballarat is one of Australia's oldest and at one time richest cities and its love of begonias goes back more than a century. The garden started here in 1857, so, and I think really with Ballarat, we have to remember that it is a gold mining town, so our history is really very much intertwined with the gold rush. It was a time in Ballarat's history where there was a lot of nurseries around here, and so a lot of nurseries were experimenting with begonias, so it was an, a natural progression for them to come into the garden's collection. Whereabouts do the begonias originate from? The original tuberous begonia were discovered in South America, so, and then they've been really developed from that original species begonia. So as a gardener watching this, what do I need to create to make them thrive? Cool. They don't want afternoon sun. So good morning sun, shelter from the wind. And are there any varieties that are more suited to the garden? Yeah, I would recommend a variety called Nonstop. So it is still a tuberous begonia and it grows shorter, so it's only around 200 mil. And it's quite easy for the home gardener to obtain. And it's also really easy for us to grow as well. All of the begonias here look fantastic at ground level in pots, but they look incredible as a hanging basket. They are pretty. These are a slightly different form. They still are a tuberous begonia but they are a pendulous form, so they naturally hang. I think there's such a variation in the, the different shapes and the colours, and look, it's hard to go past that. But I don't know of other plants that have that much variety, and um, yeah, they're pretty stunning, aren't they? Now, while the public see the perfect flowers set up there in the conservatory, there's a lot of blood, sweat, and probably a few tears that goes into making them look so perfect, all at the same time and all at the same place. So I've decided to go behind the scenes to get the inside scoop. Erin Brennan is one of the specialist horticulturists. So where does it all begin? So it begins here. So this is a tuber and these vary in size. The trick of putting a begonia is not too big a pot because if too much water, then they rot. 
So you put it in a nice free draining potting mix and you put it right at the top, just under the soil. Like this. Tag in, water it in. That's as simple as that is. But once they've established and their roots have grown, we check them every day and we water the whole lot every day by hand. How long will it take until it starts to shoot? Possibly three to four weeks. Not very long at all. And do you have to fuss over them? Is there a lot of maintenance involved? Uh, we do stake them because they get really heavy and are prone to snap. And when we put them into the conservatory, we wire the flowers so they sit up a bit and people can see them better. Cherie Blood is another member of the horticultural team. There's so many begonias here. How do you keep the numbers going? Uh, so they're all grown by cuttings. Uh, and the best time to do this is when they're first shooting in the spring. When the shoots are about 10 centimetres tall, uh, we'll simply take a scalpel, uh, just slice it just at the top of the tuber. And sometimes you might even find you get a piece of the root. We just remove those lower leaves and pop it into some prop mix. It's as simple as that? Simple as that. How long do the cuttings stay in that pot? about four weeks till it begins shooting uh, and then up to eight weeks before it's ready to repot. So once it's filled that container? Yeah, usually if you pick the tube up, you'll see roots starting to come out the bottom um, and that's when we know it's ready. As if keeping this collection going isn't enough, Erin and Cherie still find time to create their own special begonia varieties. Yep, this is one that we've made. We crossed this one here, Hannah and F.J. Bedson. So these are the two parent plants, and this is what we got in return. We call it Lady B. How Billy did that B. come about? Uh, our nickname for each other is Lady, and both our last names start with B. It just goes to show that lots of great things start with B. Bees, of course, but especially Ballarat and begonias. What do you like about begonias, Erin? I love the difference of colour, the big flower, and I love that every year's never the same. Well, they're just beautiful flowers. I mean, it's such a rewarding process to be involved in, um, beginning from when it's just a tuber and then watching it grow into producing these spectacular flowers. <laughs>